Greetings, my name is Miranda, and I wanted to honor my late frame drum teacher, Lane Redman, uh, who also authored When the Drummers Were Women, A Spiritual History of Rhythm. Today is the anniversary of her passing, October 28th, and she passed away in uh, 2013. And she was someone who significantly changed my life in um, a multiple ways. Um, I was already um, drumming in two percussion groups <clears throat> uh, before I met her and I was in my friend's uh, organic coffee shop in Long Beach called Living Planet and there was a book open called Planet Drum um, by Mickey Hart, he's drummer for the, the Grateful Dead and there was a picture of a woman playing a tambourine who looked like she was in bliss and it said Lane Redman. And I was like, wow, this, this is cool because uh, I didn't see any other women drumming back in those days and we didn't have the internet. And then the flyer next to it said that she was coming uh, to the coffee shop to do a slideshow presentation performance called When the Drummers Were Women. And this is before the book came out. So I was like, wow, I need to come to this. Um, the Living Planet Organic Sh um, coffee shop was also a workshop space, performance space, um, and so lots of beautiful things happened there. And so she came and began doing the slideshow, showing many an ancient images of women playing the frame drum, just holding the drum. And I was experiencing a homecoming. They, they were images in figurines, statues, there were carvings and paintings on temple walls and on caves, uh, paintings on bosses and plates, and uh, she would speak about them, and she had said that many of the images were depictions of either a goddess or a priestess in service to the goddess that they were earth honoring, that they um, celebrated and, on, and honored the cycles of life, the cycles of nature, the cycles of the moon and the sun. And I was already a, a nature lover and I just loved this idea and, and that they were also a reverence of, of the woman. And this was really healing for me because at that point I was, uh, for some reason I thought I was cursed to be a woman, I don't know why. And so to hear her speak so reverently of these um, ancient women priestesses and um, a mother goddess, which is all um, very new to me, was very healing for me. Um, and so, you know, that experience of, of the homecoming and if I would have been alive back in those days, I would have been the, one of the drummers. So all of that put together was um, very powerful for me to experience. And then on top of that, her drumming, to witness her drum and to hear it and reverber reverberate in the room, her playing was so potent and powerful. I could feel the intentionality of what she, of, I don't know what she was intending, but I can feel the intentionality coming um, out into the room, her technique, her, her skills um, were just, wow, I hadn't ever experienced that before. And I was like, I need to learn this instrument and she needs to be my teacher. And, uh, you know, when she closed the evening, she had taken the tambourine and she started sh doing the shaking. And I was like, whoa, what is she doing? I could feel it, the room, something happening into the room. Like it was just like, she was just like, cleaned it out, <laughs> purified it. And I was like, man, she's cool. And so I went to our workshop the next day. I'm not the next day, the next weekend. And uh, she had us, before touching the drum, drum walking, clapping, and counting. And I remember feeling very awkward because I was like, I'm missing the clap somewhere and it, I just it was, it felt so like where is that clap supposed to be and you know I was embarrassed because I'm a, I, I'm a drummer and I'm like why can't I get this but we were all kind of struggling because we 
hadn't ever experienced uh, using the whole body simultaneously. And she was really, um, when she was doing teaching us, she was in her teaching, just what she was doing was a re like, she knew she was like transmitting and she knew the power of in entrainment. And so eventually we all, you know, uh, clicked in and it was such a beautiful experience and, and rewarding because it was, we, were, we weren't quite sure if we we're going to get it. And then when we all got it, we were like happy, or at least I was feel like we were all happy about it, that we can all do this. Cause I know we were wanting to get it really bad. <laughs> and, um, I was hooked and I bought her VHS, um, instructional video to practice with. And, um, I was really blessed to also, um, join an all women's frame drum group. Uh, Wendy Griffith, who had brought Lane there and hosted the workshop at her house, was a women's studies professor, and she uh, uh, founded the group called Lippischau, which is the first named drum drummer in written history, and she was also a priestess. And so we we did ritual performances and processions. Um, and later we got to process for Lane's uh, book signings in the bookstore, going down to aisles. And, you know, I just got to experience so many new things uh, being in this women's frame drum group. So I'm just grateful for Lane and, and to Wendy for bringing Lane here and, and opening up that, that, this opportunity to further embrace my womanhood and learn more about the women's history through being in, in that group. Um, and uh, Lane was very happy <laughs> that we had this group. And I know that she's spoke about the group to other people, just like she spoke about all the other groups around the country and world and how excited she was about what's going on. I remember her talking about in Cyprus, the women called Magaya frame drummers. And so when she would speak about them, he would, I would think of them like, wow, they're legend, <laughs> you know, or the Mob of Angels uh, ritual group that she had in New York, and um, and just the impact that she had all over, you know, the world. Um, you know, for me, she also just taught me in the way that she lived her life. She modeled someone on fire with her calling and with her passion. She was bold, um, she was a pioneer. When she started drumming, there wasn't very many women frame drummers uh, or any drummers, you know, women frame drumming. And so she paved her own way. She was the first um, woman to have a signature series drums with Remo and she had the first VHS uh, instructional video and she had this academic mind so she had all these articles in magazines and she was someone who manifested all the visions that came to her so she had visions of lots of projects so and when she would get into something that she was interested in she would go in very very deep and then out of that bring something to the world another book um, another album, uh, film. Um, so she put out a lot of, a lot of things. And so I always admired her with, about her following her calling with such a passion. And uh, she lived her life with purpose and meaning and, um, and wanting to be the best citizen, world citizen, um, that she could be. So she was always also working on herself and she was interested in so many different things from yoga to pranayama, breathing, qigong, um, yo yoga, mythology, art. She was an art major before she was got into drumming and she was also very generous in um, recognizing other people's gifts and weaving people into the workshops or to the rituals. And, 
and, and gave lots of opportunity for other people to, to shine. And she developed lots of friendships of all kinds of people, and very personable. I was very shy. <laughs> um, and so there were so many things that I, you know, I, I admired her for. Um, I had the honor and blessing to be able to assist her in workshops and perform with her. And when she would do uh, the ritual performance, she would always include the audience. So she liked audience participation, and I loved that. And she would get everyone standing up and doing this walk, you know, walking and um, grounding meditation. So everyone would walk and then we would breathe in together and breathe out. And I'm like, she got everyone to do that in the room. <laughs> and so that was very inspiration, inspirational. And um, I incorporated audience participation a lot whenever I was a, had the opportunity to do that. And so that everyone is together in entrain. That's what she wanted. She wanted everyone to experience the entrainment of coming together. And because it's just a powerful experience and it's almost like the recreation of when you're in the womb and you're entrained to that the blood pulsing, um, there's that that's our time of, of oneness and of safety of um, it's a core thing that's innately in us that rhythm you know we are we were growing and developing as a human with this rhythm and so um rhythm unifies and so i love that she did that with the audience so they can have you know an experience um she always did opening invocation so uh, honoring the elements and i love that so i was inspired to always in my classes as well honoring the elements. Um, I even created a song called the Element Song. And um, she loved processions. Um, she, she, she saw that there were processions happened since ancient times. And so I've also incorporated processions in, in my work and, and used uh, circle songs. So, you know, I, uh, um, I love singing. <clears throat> and so um, it was so beautiful to have a community where they were able to walk drum and sing and do processions. Um, we've done memorials, including my mom's funeral. And I always think, oh, Lane would have just really loved that this happened. And, um, you know, so it's all because of her. So I'm so, you know, grateful um, for all that she's taught me and other students. So there's many groups around the country, around the world, who also <clears throat> use the stepping and the, and the drumming and ritual processions. And uh, it's just beautiful to see the impact that she has globally <clears throat> and that her students, her senior students who have been studying with her for a long time, um, have been teaching in, in their part of the world and that some of their students are also now teaching. And so she's left a living legacy and um, and people are still becoming her students, um, you know, not just through her her own students, but um, because she really has her instructional material now available uh, as in digital form. So there are all people who are studying her material and even maybe now also teaching it. So her her student body is growing and growing and will be growing for generations to come. And she's also created a culture of bee lovers um, because the ancient women framed women were called Melissa, uh, which means bee in Greek. And, and she had us all fall in love with the bees. And so we all love the bees and many of the frame drummers have become um, bee guardians, uh, bee stewards, and then also many bee stewards um, have become frame drummers. So there's a whole culture of frame drummers and um, bee stewards out there. And um, the importance of the bees to have a voice and what we, we can learn about the bees and um, how the ancient women frame drummers uh, regarded them as sacred and 
because um, the bees were are a, a female centered species you have the queen and then you have all the maidens and then there's drones and there's drones as well but mostly it's um and the maidens and they all work together for the good of the hive and so that model um, was very um, important and um, they have a lot to teach us and so she brought that curiosity for us to learn more about the bees um, and so um, I'm happy and grateful to be part of this modern lineage um, of reclaiming this drum as a sacred instrument which was what she, her aim was and, um, and to know to pass it on and she was generous in um, encouraging us to teach um, even if you're kicking and screaming <laughs> like I was and uh, you know she wanted the drum accessible to more people and back then we didn't she didn't teach online um, you have to come to uh, an intensive or a retreat or you know so to fly or wait till she comes to your city so she wanted it accessible to more people because she knew the power and and that it could offer transformation for people and so she even said to the beginners you know just share what you learn share what you know and uh, and she wanted to focus on you know intermediate the intermediate um, drummers um, so she was very encouraging that way and you know also she she knew she wanted to leave a legacy and so to have all this material um, to keep sharing um, and I continually uh, am inspired by her work and to I'm still getting to know her through more um, things that we find on on um, the internet of interviews um, that I hadn't seen before and I want to give a shout out to Kadam Barima for ex excavating um, all things Lane from the internet and putting it together on her website for free she's offering it for free she's collected interviews radio interviews, written interviews, um, articles, and um, videos, tributes, and you can continue to learn more about Lane, and it's been really wonderful. Um, I've been spending the last couple of weeks re-listening to things of Lane's, and I'm still learning because I'm like, I've watched this video, I don't know how many times, and I missed something, and and so it's it's pretty amazing. She was so ahead of her time, and um, I'm grateful to be a part of her lineage. And our I have a women's frame drumming um, Facebook group and page and YouTube, and it's all dedicated to Lane with her blessing. I asked her, and. Um, she thought that was one of the most important things that happened. She goes, a place where all the women can find each other and, you know, a network. And so I think I will conclude there. I have so many stories, but I just want to share um, how grateful I am to all those who continue to share her work, um, like Barbara Gale and Krista Holland and Fern and Lillian and Tori and Shurston and um, Faruna I know I'm going to miss someone's names um, Trish and, and Bar uh, Barbara, Barbara and, and Kat who are now passed uh, I mean uh, Barbara and Amy who are now passed on uh, their students are continued to teach um, thank you so much for um, keeping the fire going and um, yes so whenever you pick up the drum you're giving voice to it and you're honoring the ancient women frame drummers if you're in the line of lane um, and so thank you <laughs>